Hi guys, welcome to my channel. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch. We need to talk about making the cut, okay? So, uh, first off, I decided that I wasn't going to do singular episodes because I just didn't have the time. It would have been too ranty because I was ranting about a lot of the episodes. So, I decided to wait until the season finale and actually talk about the winner and what I thought about it and some of the problems that I had um, with it. So, let's jump straight into it. This post is going to be very spoiler heavy. So if you do plan on watching Making the Cut at any point, please don't watch this. Or if you plan on watching Next in Fashion, because I'm constantly referring to Next in Fashion as well, because I recently watched Next in Fashion as well. So you have been warned. You need to cut yourself off right now if you're not interested in finding out what happens. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to say, right, outright, Johnny shouldn't have won. But he also should have won. Why is there that contradiction? Well, it has to do with the format of the show. So I thought long and hard about how I wanted to talk about this, how I was going to break it down. And I decided to divide it into separate issues. So you've got your foundational issues, which is to do with the underlying um, pre. Uh, <sighs> The, the underlying assumption of the show itself and how it was a faulty foundation to start off with. And then we're going to talk about the judges, the problem with the judges, why that was a key issue that makes the show fail. And then we're also going to talk about why Johnny shouldn't have won. And then we're also going to talk about why Johnny should have won. <laughs> and then I'm going to talk about Esther and Sander and all that. So um, first of all, Leading up to the finale, I totally agreed with the eliminations of the other weeks when Sabato left. I mean, I just got kind of the feeling that Sabato, he had checked out. He wasn't really interested in changing who he was as a person, as a brand. And he just stuck to his guns um, in it because Tim Gunn basically told him to do something that Tim liked. But Sabato was like, no, this is not me. He stuck to his gun. He got eliminated, but he went with pride and dignity. And then also uh, Rina, Rena, I can never remember how to spell her name. She got eliminated and I thought rightly so. There was never a point that I felt like she had a, a very strong brand, anything that was, you know, particularly like, can I remember what she, she was like? And to be fair, I don't think that she was ever picked as somebody who was going to be a potential winner because I'm pretty sure that when the producers are picking people to participate in these things, they know who they want to win and they know which other checkboxes they want to tick. So I totally agreed with that one. Um, and G also went home again. Not that I don't think that she was incredibly talented because you don't get to work with Adidas if you don't have some form of a talent. Well, Beyonce does beyonce count <laughs> never mind <laughs> but yeah um i thought that that week g was quite weak in what she produced and if we had based it simply on the stuff that she did for that particular week then yeah but in other weeks she was quite uh, strong as well and she did push herself to go outside of her comfort zone which i really did appreciate and i felt really bad for her when heidi was trying to get her to you know to grovel and stuff but of course she's a professional you know she maintained her dignity and professionalism and you know she didn't stoop to heidi's level so i was like you know that's fantastic but G has got a fantastic future ahead of her. You know, she's already done things with Adidas and she's already shown that she can be very creative and she can be original. And I think that she's one to watch out for. She is going to go far. Okay. And then who else? I thought Megan, the week that she was sent home, it was very, very unfair. Number one, Heidi was saying that just because she used black, that she was reminding Heidi of Esther Esther does not have the monopoly on black. She doesn't have a copyright or a trademark on making black things. And for them to have said that, you know, uh, for Megan to be using black, it's like she's copying, she's copying um, Esther. I thought that was deeply unprofessional on the part of Heidi. And bless her, Auntie Naomi, she raised that point um, as well, which was like, oh, could I possibly like Naomi any, anymore? Um, because if you contrast that with who then won, Johnny used a lot of black as well. So was he copying Esther? So I was just like, hmm. But by the end of uh, this season, I really have gone off of Heidi. So that's my own bias that you should know about <laughs> straight away in order for you to decide whether you want to listen to this any further. But by the end of the uh, season, 
I found Heidi to be incredibly infuriatingly annoying and unprofessional and she just seemed checked out. So yeah, I don't have anything nice to say about Heidi for the most part. Okay. So that, that was the thing. And I just thought that, you know, um, for what they wanted from my understanding of it, Megan should have won over Johnny because I actually thought that Johnny had a better sorry I thought that Megan had a better offering than uh Johnny did okay so now let's move on to the judges okay <laughs> so right they changed the judges at some point during the season <laughs> okay when they went over to Tokyo for some reason Nicole Richie didn't rock up in Tokyo neither did the uh Corinne or Corey or whatever the former French Vogue editor she didn't turn up in uh, Tokyo but instead They've got an influencer, a fashion or blogger influencer. I mean, I looked her up and so I didn't even know who she was, you know, and I don't claim to be somebody who follows fashion religiously or anything like that. But I know a little bit about, you know, what's big in fashion week right now, what's big in, I know a little bit and I didn't know who this person was, you know, and I was just a bit like, okay, okay. And she's supposed to be judging who the next big global fashion brand is. Technically speaking, she's in a fashion designer. She's gone to fashion school or anything like that. She has millions of followers on Instagram. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you're into Instagram and your social media and your influencers, then absolutely fine. That is fine. But you can't then say that you want runway looks and you're getting this person to judge them. So for me, it was just kind of like, a, <laughs> it was one of those moments where I just had to walk away, just be like, what on earth is going on? And I was just like, okay, never mind. Let's just keep watching. Let's just keep watching. Maybe, maybe I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe I'm just being too harsh. Maybe I'm my expectation that if you're judging a fashion competition, you should actually have experts in the fashion field. I was like, you know what? Maybe she actually knows stuff about fashion. Maybe, I don't know her, give the benefit of the doubt. Uh, spoiler alert. She did not change my mind at all. She never added anything of value. All she would say was, you know, this is great. I would buy this. I didn't like this. I would buy this. I didn't like this. <sighs> Come on. But anyway, so that that was that. And then as we got further down, as the designers were whittled down, um, Heidi, she had a tendency to try and get the drama going. And there was a scene where she was particularly like, you know, only a conversation can, you know, a conversation can change anything. Tell me why you want this. Tell me why you want it. You know, I really need you to fight for it and all that. And it was just so cringe. It was so cringe. And it's sort of like, um, it's like a manual on how to try and make people lose their self-respect and lose their self-dignity. And thankfully, there weren't a lot of the designers who sort of um, took the bait, if, if you may call it that. There was one point where it was Johnny and Megan in the final two who were, you know, um, and they were trying to get them to, you know, to fight for, for themselves. And Megan was just basically like, you know what, frankly speaking, I feel like what Johnny has produced is been there, done that. Which was kind of true, actually, because all he did was like a simple dress in a ditzy print. And he was all like, oh, it's, it's so metamorphic. And I'm like, no, no, that's just a 90s style dress. You know, we've seen that. I can go get that from Zara or H&M or whatever. Um, but yeah, I just hated the fact that um, Heidi was uh, fishing for drama and she didn't get it. And she was bored. And you got the impression that she was absolutely bored by that. The other really annoying thing about the judges was that... Uh, so they changed the judges uh, throughout. So then you had uh, the four episodes where you had the other fashion influencer as a judge. And then you go to the final and then suddenly Nicole Richie is back. But the Vogue editor isn't back. And when they do the final uh, thing where they're doing the judges, have you changed your mind? And they're all going like, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. They do it like um, they do it so that two have voted for one person, two have voted for the other person. And then it's Nicole Richie. Of all the people, Nicole Richie is supposed to have the deciding vote over who wins this. She hasn't even been around for half of the season to see what they have been doing. She hasn't been there to interview them during the day. And she's the one that has to have the deciding vote, which was very frustrating in itself. But then I also remembered that in part of the 
final episode, the contestants, they had to do the runway show and uh, they had to present their business ideas to Christine Beauchamp, who is the head of Amazon Fashion. And she is the one that got to see their business plans. And then she then told the judges about, oh, this is what I like about the business plan. This is what I like about the business plans. And then it just occurred to me, oh my gosh, why am I getting really wound up about this? Because am I, how could I have forgotten? This is an Amazon thing. Amazon is the one that's going to be mentoring whoever wins this. As if Amazon knows anything about fashion, you know? Um, and so obviously the judges, Heidi, Naomi, Joseph Altazura, um, Nicole Richie, and the other influencer um, woman, they're not the ones who decide who wins. It's Amazon, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's Amazon who decide who they want to work with. And that became blatantly clear um, that what they wanted was just something that's akin to fast fashion, but they're trying to put like a, a fashion designer label to it, which is why Johnny actually won it. So that was quite frustrating because it was kind of like, why are you going through the facade of pretending to judge this as if their opinions matter when it doesn't it was actually up to christine beauchamp to decide who she thought that she could work with and one thing esther had said was that she wasn't willing to dilute her brand she was not willing to give her brand over to um over to amazon to do whatever they wanted to by adding color which you know i was just like you know what good 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 on you respecting you so speaking of esther let's talk about the final two um that went through so Johnny and Esther were the ones that got through to the final um, round and they had to present like a 12 to 14 piece collection. Yeah. Both of them presented mostly black stuff for, for some reason. Amazon likes black things, despite the fact that Joseph Altrazura complained so many times about how black is so difficult to photograph. You know, when you're on a web page, black is so hard to personally, I've never struggled with buying black things online I, I i think it's pretty easy but apparently they do but it turns out despite all of the complaints that you know um esther is uh, too black she needs to widen her 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 black universe as she calls it it turns out that the two final collections are mostly black which isn't a problem in and of itself but then here's the thing right Esther's collection was absolutely outstanding. She provided new things and it was just really, really inspiring. Um, the stuff that she did, like she, there was this like really magnificent black um, maxi dress. Now, I normally I'm somebody who doesn't like black at all, but I have to say I was inspired to try wearing black by all of the stuff that I've seen Esther do. And I really like that. And I think that she's fresh and innovative in the way that she approaches her brand because she's niched down. Her niche is creating black things. And one of the biggest complaints that the judges had was that you need to expand into color. Well, no, actually, she doesn't need to expand into color because people do not buy entire outfits from one brand you know you when you think of jeans you're gonna go to tommy hilfiger for jeans probably or or levi's or lee cooper because they specialize in denim nobody is telling them that you've got to be doing chinos you have to be doing palazzo plants you have to be doing you know bermuda shorts you niche down right and black is such a universal color so Esther has got a good niche in that maybe if you think you want to get a black skirt, you can go check out Esther because you know that she's going to have black jackets, black tops, black thingies and all that. And then you can mix and match them. So I just thought that that was a very narrow blinkered view of um, fashion in how they were saying that she has to do color. And I was like, no, she doesn't have to. And I was quite proud of her for actually, you know, um, standing by her guns and standing by her creative vision. And then we have that. One thing I do want to mention, which was a crying shame, and I really do think that they did wrong by Sander for this, is that when it got down to the three, they told them to go away for a month, to go back to their homes for a month and work on this 12 to 14 piece um, runway look uh, a capsule that they would then present. And so Sander went away to do that. And then during, and then they did an elimination. So they made us believe that we were going to see three catwalk shows from the three designers. But then we didn't. We only got to see the two. So Sander, technically speaking, had worked 
on that collection and I would have loved to see that because every single time Sanders sent something down the catwalk, it literally took my breath away because he just, the way he sees femininity and the way he designs stuff, it is so fresh. It is so different and so completely unique, but in a way that makes you think, I, I, I would like that, you know. And so it is such a shame that we didn't get to, I think it's a travesty that we didn't get to see that. But then again, when you then think about it, you realize that Amazon wasn't interested in anything that was groundbreaking. They weren't interested in new stuff. They just wanted things to compete with H&M, to compete with your high street fashion brand. In which case you had that with Johnny and Megan. And we come back to Megan shouldn't have been eliminated because her look was very commercial and she also could sew a heck of a lot better than Johnny because two separate occasions, Johnny had to ask for help from Esther and from, is it Renat or Rena? I, I can never remember her, to help with finishing his sewing and his looks. So even his time management for somebody who claims to have had a business for that long, two separate key occasions, he wasn't able to finish his tasks on time where others were finishing and then they were helping him. But nobody called him out on that. Nobody. That was one of the first few times that I began to realize that, oh, Johnny is going to win because they were editing it in such a way that made it seem like, you know, Johnny has got so much struggle and he got way more airtime than everybody else did. OK, and I'll come on to some of the points where <laughs> which show that they were already editing it to favor uh, Johnny It's almost like they decided who was going to win. And all of the edits were revolving around that. Um, one of them was the Skype call with his family. So totally unnecessary. Not we never got to see all of the other people have Skype calls, except for in episode two, when Martha was Skype calling her her babies Um or her kids um, and all that. But for Johnny, he's Skype calling um, for the launch of his shop or something like that. And he was just given so much time. And then there was the episode where they spent so much time showing us him coming up with the, almost as if Johnny is the first person to ever come up with the idea to dye his uh, dress that he had made, the really plain looking dress with tea. And then just because he made a dress go from a white background to a beige background it's supposed to be so groundbreaking from white to beige i mean no but he was given all of that airtime to make it seem like oh gosh he's such a creative person you know um the other thing was uh, the way they were presenting his sweatshop i'm sorry there's no other way to look at it he's got a sweatshop in bali and he's making it say like it's it's sustainable it is really sustainable. Esther has her clothes made in Germany and Poland. Because it's the EU, you know they're getting paid a minimum wage and all that. In, uh, but <laughs> he's offshored his production, right? And there was a point where he was even saying proudly that, you know, I, all I had was $500. And I took that and I went to Bali and I set up my thing in there. In my opinion... From what I know about offshoring, you do that because it's cheaper. You're not doing that because you're paying them the same rates that you would pay them if you were making your clothes um, in America or wherever else it is. And I may be entirely wrong. Again, this is all entirely my opinion. I don't want to get sued. Please don't sue me or anything like that. This is just opinion. Opinion. Okay. So it was pretty clear that he's the one that was going to be um, winning. And that's what they had chosen. Okay, so another thing that I forgot to mention whilst I was in the car was that um, they also made Johnny a heck of a lot more relatable when they did the pop-up shop. Speaking of the pop-up shop, I forgot to mention this. So the second to last episode, the judging criteria was that they were to set up their own pop-up shops and they were going to be judged um, in part according to how many people actually came to buy from the pop-up shop. The fact that the pop-up shops were placed in New York meant that Obviously, uh, Johnny being American had a higher advantage because what's to stop him informing people that, hey, come over to my pop-up shop and actually buy to help me win and all that. OK. And then in his pop-up shop, in his pop-up shop, which is a really small space, he's got people doing voguing. You know, 
I don't know about you, but when you're shopping, do you really want to be around people that are just like dancing? I just thought, I was just like, how, how is this good? Sander had a very sensible plan, which was that he had tailors around to actually customize the fit of the clothes. And that, that's one of the biggest problems that you have with RTW is the fact that what fits you in one, the same, you know, the sizes are so different. And Sander was actually dealing with that. So he had a great idea for a pop-up shop, you know, and um, was this Esther's Black Universe was a really beautiful Black Universe, really beautiful clothes. And then you had the... Uh, when Naomi and Heidi were going around looking at the shops, which do we even know if their purchases were counted towards the final tallies? Because it's not fair how much they ended up buying in Johnny's shop versus where they bought um, in other places. But anyway, as they were shopping, you know, bless them, you, you could see how unrelatable they were because there was this bit where they were like, oh, I like this coat. I like this coat. How much is it, please? Johnny goes like, oh, it's, I think, 350 And they're like, oh. And, and then Naomi goes like, oh, should I get it in the black or the blue? And then Heidi is like, oh, in that case, get them two because it's like 350 and $700 is nothing for us. So much so that we'll buy two of them, you know. I mean, and I was just like, <sighs> so unrelatable and these are the people who are judging something that's going to be on amazon fashion i mean do we really do we really believe that naomi and heidi have ever ever shopped on amazon for their fashion at all do we really believe that they know what people who are shopping on amazon are looking for really truly it's you know anyway that little rant aside when we did the pop-up shops right for Johnny, um, you had, I think it was his parents and um, his niece and nephew. They're lovely people. I'm sure that they're wonderful people and all that. But it was edited in a way to make him more relatable because who doesn't love babies? Babies are so cuddly and cute and all that. And it's like, oh, cuteness overlord. And, you know, there he is being associated with that. Esther had nobody come there, making her less relatable. And I just thought that edit was really a bit because mm, they were really trying to stack on like ability factors for Johnny. Sander had his family come, his uh, mother and his sister. And, you know, I thought that his shop was different. It was weird. It was quirky. If I was walking past that shop, would have caught my eye and I'd have been interested to come into it. I wouldn't have been interested so much to go into, you know, the, 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 the Vogue in place, I, I would have just been like, is this, is this, what is this? Is this a nightclub? Is this a shop? Is this a, is this a whatever? But, you know, that was my deal, deal with it. And um, the fact that it wasn't judged purely on just the sales that they made is, is you know, it's, it's a little bit suspect for me. And we weren't even told what the sales were, because at least on The Apprentice, you're told how much each... A team made so that was quite suspect for me in terms of um what was that plus also when you have a pop-up shop marketing is far more important than the actual event itself how was the marketing done would it be fair for sander and esther to be penalized because the pop-up shop isn't in their own country because you know if their customer base is over in europe are they expecting their customers who are big fans of them to fly over to new york whereas so it's just everything was just so wrong and off about um this episode and then above all else the fact that we didn't get to see sanders 12 piece um catwalk that is a travesty absolute travesty anyway back to the car so the other thing is his business plan when he presented his business plan even christian beauchamp had said that it is very vague it was quite vague um she said unless that they were unless they were playing it up I don't think so because her credentials are pretty legit. She's got like an MBA from Harvard and she did an undergrad at Princeton and she used to work for Goldman Sachs. So she is somebody who is very business minded. She knows how to make money and she's in it to make money. And so clearly she's chosen the one person that she thinks will definitely make money and would be willing to work with them. And this is why Johnny won that show. He's willing to sell his soul to Amazon. In my opinion, of course, in my opinion, again, please don't sue me. Don't sue me. This is just opinion. <laughs> but right from the get-go, we saw that he was willing to even change his brand because he had skin graft, which I have to agree with the judges that that is the most uh, 
terrible sounding name for a brand because a skin graft is something that you normally put on people who've had like burns or something like that. It's, it's, it's an unpleasant visualization as far as I'm concerned. And so when they told and he was like, oh, I'm going to change it to Johnny Cole. And then he changed it to the name that he changed it to. And he was all like everything. He was just like, um, you know, just like an open an, an, an open mind so much that, you know, there's a saying that don't let your mind be so open that your brain falls out or something like that. I'm not saying that that is him, but I am saying that I got that impression because he would just do whatever the judges would say. And if they said this, he'd be like, oh, yeah, OK, I can I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And in fact, so much so that his final collection had no coherence whatsoever. You couldn't look at look one and look five and see that it's got the same brand DNA. Say what you like about Esther and her black universe you would know that this is an Esther design because it was also coherent. Joni wasn't coherent. It was like somebody's just picking up magazines and throwing them at the wall and hoping something will stick. And that's a collection. And all of his stuff, all of his stuff, there was nothing on there that you cannot get from Zara, that you cannot get from H&M, that you cannot get from Primark. And that's coming from somebody who doesn't do a lot of shopping. But I see these things in the catalogs that come through my letterbox when they're doing their marketing campaigns and all that. So it was just a really kind of like, yeah, they. So this comes down to the big problem that the show has, which is that they presented it as a fashion show, but it isn't a fashion show. This is a commercial show this is like a you know we want a brand that makes things that can sell commercially like your high street brands do because amazon fashion it is it's 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 amazon fashion um guys and it, it's never gonna be high fashion it will always be fast fashion because that's kind of amazon's thing they do fast fashion. And I love Amazon. I've had Amazon Prime for years now. And I love that. I love that I can order something and I will get it. Um, you know, if, if I order it before 12, I'll get it by nine o'clock that day. <laughs> and I know that Amazon is, you know, it's not the greatest company in terms of how it treats its people and its ethics and what have you. But oh my God. Gosh, it is so handy to be able to order things and just get them straight away in its next day delivery. And they don't disappoint in that regards. Um, so, you know, why would we expect anything different from something that they're going to pump a million dollars into? So that's why I guess Johnny should have won and why that's probably the right person to win. And I don't think I would have had so much of a problem with it if it was billed as we're looking for the next Amazon designer, you know, somebody to make clothes to sell on Amazon. That would have been fine. Then, yeah, right from the beginning, I would have said, you know, yeah, of course, you need to go with this guy. This guy's just willing to do anything to get that money, you know, Um versus sort of saying to us that this is about fashion and we're looking for somebody who's fashion and we're looking for somebody to do runway looks. We're looking for somebody to do... Does Zara do runway looks? No. Does H&M do runway looks? No. Do they do conceptual fashion? No, they don't. They do stuff that just sells and that could be cute, ditzy, whatever, and all. And that would have been fine. But... For them to put in somebody like Sande, who has got this really brilliantly beautiful, weird, outside-the-box mind, who creates these things that you, you've you never seen anywhere else that could possibly be groundbreaking in fashion, next to somebody who makes the same variation of a biker jacket and biker jacket and then you're saying that it's a competition no no that 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 didn't work so it's an expectations thing so in operations management which was my speciality it was always that you had to manage your customers expectations because if you didn't manage your customers expectations and they thought they don't get what they thought they were going to get 
they would perceive that your company has failed when it's not that your company has failed, but it's just that the expectations were completely wrong. And that is the problem with making the cut. The expectations were completely wrong. It is not fashion. And Heidi and Tim should not have pretended otherwise. They should have just said straight up, we want somebody to compete with H&M. And we would have been fine with that. But for them to try and pretend like it's fashion, that's the problem, guys. Don't pretend like it's a fashion um, show when it isn't a fashion show um, in the sense that we perceive fashion to be. Fast fashion show? Yeah, absolutely. Fashion fashion? No, it is not. So another thing that I also thought um, was quite disappointing about the show was that on top of uh, Tim and Heidi doing all of the press publicity that they did trying to say that this is not Project Runway, this is different. One of the key things that they kept on emphasizing was that this is an international competition. It is not like Project Runway, which was just, you know, US based and all that. They're bringing together international flavors. So we get to see different design aesthetics. We get to see the different stories of fashion and all that, right? And that's wonderful. And it is wonderful when you see fashion that is inspired from different regions, because that's how we come up with some things that are really interesting and groundbreaking. But then you end up with an American winning the show, right? And it's not because he's doing anything groundbreaking either. None of his stuff is groundbreaking, which also made me think about how the tax systems work and all that. And I think from a practical business perspective, right, Christine Beauchamp is the head of Amazon Fashion and she's the one that is obviously going to have to work with the designer. And they've only been selling the clothes on Amazon.com, which is the US side of things. You couldn't buy this stuff on Amazon.co.uk. You had to be going on to the .com site. From a practical perspective, they wanted somebody who was also American. And also for tax purposes, because when you give that $1 million, it's going to be impacted by the tax authorities of the you know, where the company is held, Esther already has an established company in Germany and the tax regimes in Germany are completely different to the ones that are in America. And perhaps they asked the designers, I don't know, maybe they might have asked them if the designers were willing to relocate um, to America or to a country with easier tax um, jurisdiction that could work hand in hand with the American side um, more. I can't imagine that Esther would have agreed to that, given that she's somebody who's got a very strong, well-formed idea of what her brand identity is, would have agreed to that. I'm not sure about Sunday either, whether it was something that he would have agreed to. But it seems to me clearly that from a practical business perspective, it was a lot easier for Amazon to have an American-based designer to work with, to develop clothes, to sell on amazon.com which is primarily an american market and i think that that was such a shame because then in doing so they just became project runway 2.0 despite heidi klum trying to say as much as she could that this was completely different this is another baby that she's trying to push out and she used some baby analogy which just was like yeah Right. I feel like it was actually a blessing in disguise that Esther and Sander didn't win. I think that they are going to go on and do really well in the world of fashion. And they are definitely, especially Sander, he is one to watch because for someone so young who was producing such really wonderful, inspiring, um, out of the box fashion, he is definitely one to watch. And hopefully this show will have given his brand the publicity um for him to to get the doors opened that will allow him to explore his unique approach to fashion. And as for Esther, I hope that she just continues to do what she is doing, sticking by her brand. You know, she has given me the inspiration to try wearing black. I have never been a person into black, but I just really loved her devotion to the color and how she was able to use it to incorporate different textures of black amazing stuff so i do think that it is good for them that they didn't get to be um an amazon designer because i have a feeling that's what we have to look forward to in the future with making the cut is that they're going to have this thing that they call amazon designers as amazon tries to take over i think it's going to try and take over preta pote because that's just how amazon rolls so that is my review of 
Uh. Oh, there's there's a delivery. Just a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Somebody just came to do a delivery, so I had to run out and uh, intercept them before they rang the doorbell. But anyway, so that is my review of making the cut overall. And I still stand by what I said right at the beginning, which is that Next in Fashion is way, way better. If you have to make a choice between making the cut and Next in Fashion, definitely go for Next in Fashion. Unless if you are looking for a hate watch. And by that, I mean that your voice will be hoarse from yelling at the table, yelling at the inconsistencies, being annoyed with some of the team and Heidi things. By the end of the episode, your voice will be really hoarse and you'll be just like, mm. so if you like a hate watch, then absolutely do go for making the cut. That's it, guys. I really hope that you've enjoyed this post, that you found it entertaining, insightful, useful, etc., etc. And if you did, do give it a big thumbs up down below. As always, do subscribe and hit your notification bell so that you can be made aware when I post out new content. Otherwise, the YouTube algorithm will decide what it wants to push um, for you. So please do hit the notification bell and do let me know what your thoughts are on the winner for this making the cut do you think that the right person won for it until i see you next time guys happy sewing bye